bro. Hello, gamers. Hi, everyone. Oh, well, let's lower a little bit of music. Uh, Spotify doesn't have a very consistent volume. Or at least this Spotify channel. Oh. I should get a soundboard. So I can control the volumes without having to click around the desktop. But I don't want to <laughs> buy a massive soundboard. Would be nice to have effect, sound effects. Hmm. So I hope everyone enjoyed the stream from Monday. I managed to um, get 51 followers now, which means I have achieved the uh, affiliate <laughs> uh, rank on Twitch, which is good. It's good fun. Of course, they gamified the the experience of the of a streaming website. Of course they did, because what could possibly go wrong? Let's gamify everything. I mean, they managed to gamify GitHub or any other software development like tool. So of course they gamified Twitch. We should have more achievement in, in real life. Achievement unlock. Made tea. Other achievement unlocked. Drank tea. Ah. Weather is still incredibly awful here in London, so. Yeah, you, you can. You can't, of course, see it because I am opposite to it, but I have a window right in front of me that looks on my back garden. And it's oriented south, so it, it always has sun. Well, light. The problem is there is no light. It's still ostensibly daylight. So, technically speaking, there should be sunlight. But no, it's just grey and dark-ish. During summer is terrible though, because it's always exposed to the south uh, side, so which means that it gets unbearably hot. Oh, hello Georges and hello Abento Gil. So yeah, during summer, this room is going to be very, very toasty, bordering on super hot. And I only have a, a small fan, a small, like, water-cooled fan. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, um, especially now that there is the big desktop machine which has a bunch of fans. It has two fans for the um, the liquid cooling for the CPU, and two fans for the GPU. I had to remove one case fan to extract the heat because the noise was making was incredibly high. And I don't have any software to control like fan speed and stuff like that. Which is kind of annoying. Sadly, it's only for, for Windows, not for Linux. 
so I have to deal with that. Uh, you can control the uh, the profile and the the the, the curve for uh, spinning up and spinning down the the various fans in your BIOS setup for this um, for this machine. But you basically have to eyeball it because it could be um, basically have to, to assume the fact that if your machine is at uh, 60 degrees Celsius, then you have to have this much fan going and this much percentage of the fan um, speed going. You cannot do live tweaking. You have to do it before everything starts. Would be a would be a good project. There there is a, a, a little project that um, pokes at the. Uh, it's all controlled via, via uh, uh, HI, uh, HID um, on on Linux, but basically I have to poke registers manually like sending characters to the driver and see what happens there is a python tool that deals with that can read back and and in theory control stuff but yeah it's all very esoteric very um old school let's expose everything as a file after all the only api you need is cat or t <laughs> also you have to tweak everything using um groups so that you can your user can poke at the uh, kernel interfaces without having to go through uh, root which isn't a great idea oh and of course of course it's all tested on ubuntu and all the ubuntu and usually ubuntu lts because that's what you would use for everything right uh, yeah well It's all going to. Hmm. So, hmm. Mm -hmm. today, uh, wanted I wanted to instead of um writing documentation, I wanted to work on writing. A documentation writer uh, so you know that um, I don't know if I don't know if you know it but uh, basically every dbus interface has the ability to be introspected documentation section yes <laughs> and if you thought writing documentation was hard writing a documentation tool <laughs> It's good fun. Um, but yeah, uh, every DBus interface has the ability to be introspected. So you ask for a, you ask a service to basically describe itself. You ask an interface to describe itself, uh, which means you will return all the signals, the methods, the properties, and everything else, including a description. That introspection can be determined at, at runtime just by querying the interface. It's part of the Dbus uh, fundamental um, interfaces, and it's all described using an XML like dialect. Now, you can also go the other way around, and if you, you start by describing the Dbus interfaces as XML, and then you have typically code generators that will turn that XML into an actual interface, 
or in the case of um, how is it called uh, high level languages it will they will take the XML description and then generate all the stubs for you so that you don't have to deal with manually wrapping that document that manually implementing that implement that um, interface you still have to write your own logic of course but the the stubs and everything that deals with I received uh, this method or I have this property and everything else it's all generated from the XML uh, Glib has this tool called GDbus CodeGen GDbus CodeGen is a small ish Python tool that will take the XML description of an interface and will generate the C code that is integrated with GIO. So you get all the asynchronous API, the header, the implementation of the stubs, the sorry, the definition and declarations of the stubs. Uh, you also get all the G object goodness so that you get the proxy objects and the proxy interfaces and everything else because it's a lot of code to write manually and it's boring and it's usually when you it's usually when you couple boring code with lots of code that mistakes happen and typically a mistake in any ipc mechanism well it means that you spend way way too much time uh debugging stuff so it's not great which means you should always describe your debug interfaces using xml and then generate the code from there and that's part of it the other part of it gbus code gen also generates the documentation for that interface it will take the XML and will take the annotation with the documentation and the comments for the documentation there and it will turn them into um, a currently a docbook XML file that can be, then be uh, included into any other documentation generators that uses docbook XML most notably GTK doc which is what GTK used to use and Glib still uses for generating their API references. What this mechanism does is you have a library, for instance, or, a, or an application that has uh, an interface, an internal interface for plugins, for instance. And if it exposes a Dbus API, then it will uh, you, you will generate the code using GDBus code gen, but you also generate documentation pages for that interface using GDBus code gen. And when that happens, you take the generated XML and you include it inside your own API references. You might have spotted the issue here. Docbook XML and GTK doc not many documentation tools actually support docbook xml and not many libraries in gnome are still using gtk doc to this day because gtk doc is unmaintained and also not really good well it's not really good compared to what people expect these days so a fast documentation generator and a decent output and also a tool that can be contributed to without dying well at least gtk doc is written in python now even though it's probably the worst python you'll ever see um, because it was ported straight from Perl. so it's python written as Perl. But it also is Perl from 20 years ago. So not great. 
I mean, I... <laughs> I come out as an anti-Pearl person. I'm not anti-Pearl person. I'm, I'm not anti-Pearl. I, I actually enjoy Pearl. I, I enjoy writing Pearl. I enjoy actually reading good Pearl. Um, contrary to what you might have heard, you can read Pearl if it's written competently. Um, a lot of people have been burned by Pearl that was um, written as you would write a quick shell script. Try writing a shell script that is maintainable in the long run and you will fail. That's why people are rewriting every single shell script they have in Python or Go or whatever other language you can find. And Perl got a very bad rap because it was written mostly by sysadmins. Um, and sysadmins do not know how to program. That's, that, that's a basic fact of life. People that know to how to actually program stuff would write decent Perl and it's perfectly fine to, to read it. But again, Perl written 20 years ago, not incredibly well. They're using, um, using practices that could only be described as let's make this stuff look like a shell script as fast as we can. Isn't great Perl to read. And every time I open like GTK doc to fix something, I usually start cringing instantly and wanted to rewrite a bunch of it and fail miserably because rewriting a lot of Perl is hard. Like rewriting anything is hard. Luckily, somebody else contributed the Python port to GTK doc, which I didn't use. I I wrote my own Python co uh, documentation generator to avoid contributing to GTK doc, <laughs> which is yeah, yeah. Um, but the the other thing that I I want to do, I want to point out is that docbook is a format that not many documentation generators these days support. For one, GI DocGen, which is what we use to generate the API reference for GTK uh, these days, does not support it at all. Um, and other tools like Sphinx, which we, Sphinx, which we use for generating the, document, the developer documentation website, does not support DocBook XML. So, GDBS code gen should theoretically get a better, uh, well, not a better, different documentation generator instead of using DocBook or alongside using DocBook because after all, some people still are using it. So my idea was to write a restructured text documentation generator for GDBus code gen today. Um, which means writing a bunch of Python <laughs> and to generate like plain text, possibly something that is testable in the long run, but at the very least working as a as an initial implementation and see where we can go from there. Uh, hopefully before the API freeze for Glib, since um, it means adding a new command line argument to GDBus code gen. Um, why restructured text? Restructured text is It's a good text format. It has some quirks, which I don't particularly enjoy, but it's a it's a good textual format for documentation. Uh, it lets you specify links. It 
a decent way. It lets you um, lets you deal with uh, how is it called? Um, not only internal link, not only external links, but also internal links. It lets you deal with styling and everything else. But more importantly, which is kind of a thing, is a lot better specified than Markdown. Markdown is an unspecified mess. It It's good enough for small like documentation blocks, which is why we use it inside GTK doc. No, inside, sorry, the, the um, uh, documentation stanzas in GTK doc. I am away. Yeah, yeah, uh, I cringed so much that writing GA doc gen was a viable idea. Um, to be fair, I, I started writing GA doc gen because I wanted to see if I could write a decent, um, uh, is it called? The, a decent introspection parser that didn't look, uh, messy um why do you get a time out? um so since you're first time here uh i do not have anybody moderating the chat the chat um so i have i'm running uh the bot to moderate the content so i don't have to deal with spam or anything else and i try to tone it down a little bit in but it what it uh reacts to long messages and reacts to uh, too many caps and reacts to other spammy things. So if, if the bot detect, if you anger the the, the bot, uh, the bot will come down and will um, will deal with that. I don't have an entire I don't have entire control on that. Uh, on what the bot decides, so because again, that's it. Uh, hi, Gnu and Tifa. Uh, would you say that after GI Doc Gen, you are one of the people responsible for the failure of the Linux desktop? Yes, I'm always. <laughs> now that I've been identified, I will always be a, one of the people responsible for the failure of the Linux desktop. Especially documentation. Uh, <laughs> that was a... Uh, yeah, I bought the mutes. A nice message. Yeah, I know that it's... Well, you cannot endow the bot with magical powers. Uh, it doesn't... It doesn't work that way. Um, it will only hit stuff that looks a lot like spam. Not much I can do. Um, so the, the message was written by somebody on YouTube uh, on the, the video of my talk at linuxconf.au uh, this um, Saturday. <laughs> the 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 document the comment section in that video devolved pretty quickly into people calling each other out for being assholes to the point that the people that deal with um uh with that channel will uh that have basically disabled comments <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm not gonna deactivate it i'm sorry uh not right now at the very least i'll, I'll try to tweak it but uh there is no there is no mechanism by which uh, a bot can identify if a message is nice or not I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, there will always be uh, a message there. Yeah, you see. Uh, now George's uh, angered the, the bot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But I'm I'm pretty sure he did that on purpose. Ah, uh, so right. So let let's 
switch to my desktop and see if we can get this party started. Okay. So, as I was saying, GDBus Code Gen has um, is written in Python. It's a it's a uh, it's a tool that was written in Python in twenty eleven. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, the bot the bot doesn't understand sarcasm. It's so annoying when bots do not understand that. So GDBus Code Gen has a pretty standard structure. It's just a, a CLI tool and has a, a main block that defines all the command line arguments and spins up the generators that you're interested in. Oh my god. Um, so we identified this. I already started like plumbing the thing last night. Um, so basically we start by adding a new command line argument that deals with generating the documentation, which is here. So outside of generate doc book, we also have generate RST which is uh, the new document, the new command line, command line argument that we want to deal with. We follow the exact same uh, structure as docbook generator. So instead of outputting this kind of file .xml, we output this RST file. And then we tell if the generate RST argument is set, then we instantiate the generator for restructured text for all the interfaces in the XML, and we generate the output. It's pretty, it's pretty trivial, not not very complicated at all. Um, and then we go into the RST code generator which for the, is for the structured text. And this is basically a stub. Um, the code generator has two, well, as one method, which is the generate one, which takes the um, output uh, prefix here and the output directory from the command line argument iterates over every single interface and then opens up a file, blah, 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 and then close it, closes it. It's pretty, it's pretty trivial. I put in bladder. It's, it's not complicated at all. What becomes complicated is going through all the interfaces and then enumerating every single bit of the interface that is there. Uh, are you on the follow counter? Um, yeah, I, I guess I, I reached the 50 followers counter, but, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens after that. It would be, it would be nice to have more, more followers. So I can, I can get that nice dopamine fix of the, uh, Twitch achievements. <laughs> Um, so since we are, we are writing a documentation, like the documentation output, we should probably look at here. So this code was written in 2011 and you can see it was written for, for Python 2 in 2011 and you can see it, it was written by 
uh, not only for Python 2, but also by, by a person that doesn't, uh, that didn't excessively need no Python. <laughs> it writes Python like you would write C code, which is fine. It's fine. Like for instance, it's not very idiomatic Python. It's actually not idiomatic at all. It's also leaky. Like the last. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's not great. Not great Python. But I'm not gonna fix the Python everywhere else because that's boring. Also, it's a nerd snipe, and I don't want to fall into that trap. But basically, the the, the basic structure is pretty. It's pretty understandable, I think. It's it's not complicated to to understand. You open a file and you write the file for that particular interface. And then if the object, you write the preamble here. So you get the ref entry and ref name div and blah, 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 which is standard doc book gunk. And then for every method, you print the synopsis. For every signal, you print the synopsis. For every property, you print the synopsis. Then you start with the section and you write the description of the interface, whether or not it's deprecated, whether or not it has a since annotation. And then for every method, you write a section about it. And for, sorry, not for every method. If there are methods, you start a section add every single method there and so on and so forth. It's pretty simple. Restructure text is a little bit different. Oh my God. It's a little bit different because it's plain text. It doesn't have an actual um, structured markup tree. So, um, let's see if I can get, there you go. Oh, sorry. I have to change that color here. And yeah. Um, so a, a simple restructure text file is like this. Uh, let's see, um, projects, GTK, docs, reference. let's see, yep. Yeah. All the man pages for GTK 4 have been rewritten using restructured text, which is another thing that I, I did for, for um, GTK 4. Because the man pages were written using DocBook as well, uh, even after we switched to GI DocGen. And after writing them, uh, so they were written in DocBook so that you could generate the man pages, but also you could include them into the API reference and print them out as part of the of the reference. Um, you cannot do that with GI DocGen because it doesn't support XML. And but you can go from a structure text to man page, and uh, which is a lot easier and faster than going through uh, DocBook XML and XML to um, man page. Why RSD and not Markdown? Um, so first of all, hi Gabmus. And um, Markdown is very underspecified, especially for complex um, like pages. For small documentation chunks, it's perfectly fine, but for long stuff, is not really great. The other thing is that it's hard to go from Markdown to any other format outside of like HTML, mainly for two reasons. The first one is Markdown is very poorly specified, so there there are many transformation mechanisms that go from Markdown to any other format. And B, because you can embed 
HTML directly into Markdown, which means you cannot transform it into something else without also knowing how to transform a HTML into something else. Um, restructured text, on the other hand, is l a little bit more strict. Um, no, sorry, a lot more strict. It's an actual documentation format. It's well defined. It, you, um, there are a lot tools that go from restructured text to other formats. Uh, whereas Markdown, in order in order to go from Markdown to other formats, most of the time you have to do uh, Markdown extensions to that uh, to Markdown, and extensions are typically unstandardized. They are even less standardized than Markdown. That's why um, GI Dog Gen uses Markdown plus the extensions for the. Um, the Python Markdown extensions specifically, and not even all of them, just a very selected few, like tables and a couple of other things. And I even had to add extensions to deal with the uh, in intra and cross-linking functionality for, for GI Doc Gen. So you can l easily link between methods and properties and everything else. Um, but yeah, basically Markdown is a way to generate HTML from very plain, simple text. And everything above that is so custom that is specific to uh, a, a very precise implementation. Restructured text is not. Um, so yeah, this is a Markdown, this is a, sorry, restructured text page for the GTK Builder tool man, uh, man page. So you can see it's still pretty plain texty and easy to follow. But also if you if you've seen the other streams that I've done, uh, the documentation for the, the developer documentation I'm writing for GNOME is written using restructured text because Sphinx understands that natively. Uh, it's also what Python uses all over the place. So, um, But yeah, basically what I want to generate is something similar to this. So to a point, uh, let, let's stub something something on in that um in that style um so let's open my uh, source glib has a couple of um examples there for um, dbus should be in tests yes and there should be and that services modules gd bus object manager example uh, let's see yeah yeah this is an example of an um d bus interface annotated properly through uh, G for GDBus code gen to pick up. So you start with a node and then you have the comment block here with the name of the interface, a short description for the summary and a since annotation that says this interface is available since library version 2.30. And this is the short, the long description. So GDBus CodeGen will all, will already take apart everything in here and store it inside the internal um, internal data, data structures. Uh, then we go inside the interface. We have a property like mood type string access read. This is the name of the property, and 
the short description of the property. These two is available since. This is the long description. So as you can see, this is docbook stuff. Uh, so you get a literal tag here. And this is a GTK doc um, annotation. Well, no, it's not an annotation. It's basically GTK doc will go through the documentation, the, 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 the text. And if anything ends up with open and close parentheses, GTK doc will then backtrack look at the whatever it's it's here if it looks like a function a symbol then it will go through the list of symbols that are available in the in the system and if it finds it then it will match it to a function side note this is shit really it's a it's so bad that i i don't even know how to define it in terms of like on a scale to zero to complete and utter bullshit this is 12. um so the the good part is that basically oh also uh this is another gtk docism uh this is a signal so it starts with a sigil which it the it's the hash then there is something separated by two colons and then another something this is in theory a signal um, so it will look up if there is a signal definition for this uh, this symbol that matches jumped and then will link the jumped signal there again this is entire bullshit because GTK doc will use this for everything, for properties, for um, types, for anything. And people will get it wrong as well, because I've seen even in Jilib stuff that starts with hash and they and they are not symbols, like they're constants, for instance, and they do not match that. So it's entire bullshit. It's entirely bullshit. The good part is that we don't have to care about any of this. Well, it's not that we don't have to care about this, but basically we will take whatever it is inside the description and dump it as is. If it doesn't render or if it renders incorrectly, don't care. Fix your XML. Remove the GTK docism and docbookism. And when you decide to switch from docbook to um, restructure text. Literally don't care. Um, this is a method definition. So the documentation blurb has the method name and the arguments start with an at since annotation. And once again, a reference to a property. So you can see the, the same syntax matches signals and properties. And also matches, I don't know if you can, if, if it's here as well, but it will also, yeah, it will also match the type. So if it's not followed by anything, we assume it's a type. So this is why I literally do not like GTK doc at all. And every time I have to choose something to, every time I have to fix something inside GI doc gen, I think, how did GTK doc did this? And I do the exact opposite. Um, so our documentation code gen, our documentation generator will receive all of this stuff um, already pre-parsed in theory. Yeah, it should. Uh, yeah, signal prototype. 
Where is it? Print signal prototype. Yeah. Yeah, you get the signature. And then you write down everything else. Uh, all everything aligned. It's <laughs> God. So stupid. But yeah, for everything you get the uh, it's already broken down into uh into bits. So you can already go from one to the other. Um and you also have all the arguments with the direction and the type and the name. So you can generate not just C code. For instance, the same XML will not only be used to generate the um, documentation, the documentation, but also the C code in case of GDBus code gen, which means you need to have the direction in which it goes, in which something goes, the type, so it will map B to a Boolean, for instance, and S to a const char S. And then the argument name. So you can literally generate also uh, the proper C API. So declarations and definitions. What we need to do on our code gener uh, documentation generator is basically do kind of the same, but we will have to decide how to structure our text instead of um, relying on a structure of docbook. Because docbook already has a bunch of stuff like, um, how's it called? Yeah. Like links is already, are already there and stuff like that. And then get synopsis tags that will do the right thing for you for, for what you have to do. Why, why is everything aligned? Also, not only is everything aligned, but also it's using interpolation, like one style of strings. And then suddenly another line uses another style of string and then the uh, indentation is off. Why? Why? Why are you doing this to me? Why? <sighs> but yeah, restructure text doesn't have any of this structure. You define your own structure. So one thing that we should do before we actually start is define how a restructure text documentation page for a Dbus interface should look like. So we should probably start off with, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah. So the th first thing that it does is it uses the name of the interface as the title. Um, do we have an example render? Yes, we should have an example render. Here. On the old doc developer documentation website. So we can actually look at how it will look like there. Uh, something like LXML, not a simple proper XML library. No, because um, so the code inside GI doc gen. Uh, let me s uh, let me see if we have the parser for that here. Oh, come on. The parser is using expat. Uh, the overall idea is that, so it's not, I'm going to say no. The overall idea of this parser is that it is fast and 
uh, comes straight with Python. It also doesn't need complications because the XML is well-defined. And usually, even if it's handwritten, it's not going to be a massive pain in the ass. Also, you have to parse comments and stuff. So right now it's using XPath. If you have an XML library that comes straight with Python, that also can parse comments, and it's fast as XPath, then it's fine. But to be fair, I don't see anything changing in this anytime soon. But if you want to, oh, writing XML, no, writing XML, no, writing XML is just dumping like strings. It's fine. I, I, you don't need a, an actual XML library to do this. Um, plus, ideally, when I'm done with this, people will stop using the docbook XML output. <laughs> We're not gonna remove it, but it's going to be less and less used. So I don't think there's a lot of... There are many reasons to dump uh, effort into that that particular side of the, of the generator. So uh, let me see. We were looking at... Yeah. Yeah. So... This is the generated like page from the XML. And then you can also see the generated C file, which also comes with a bunch of uh, documentation annotations that can be parsed by GTK doc and GeoObject introspection in theory. But yeah, so how does it look? First of all, the title is gonna be the name of the interface which is fine. Then you have the name of the interface with the short description. Then you have the um, uh, synopsis for methods, signals, and properties. Then you have the long description, since annotation, and the deprecated annotation. Then you have the details for every method, the detail for every signal, and the, proper and the details for every property. It's very GK, GTK doc like. So, again, this is all meant to integrate inside GTK doc. Since we don't have to care about that, we can define our own style. So, the first, first thing we have to yeah, drop. is likely the synopsis of everything before the description. I know that people like the synopsis at the top, but it doesn't tell you anything. If you don't know what jumped is, it only tells you that it's a signal, but there is no description there. You, ha you literally have to go and click to figure out what stuff is. It's one of the reasons why I dropped it from GI DocGen as well. It's because it doesn't tell you anything. It's just a like repeating like here's the header file for this for this file for this type. Um, well, it's an index. Then go. There's a reason why indices are not put at the very beginning of a book, right? You don't put the index right at the very the first page of the book is the index, and then you jump into that. Um, or any any book, whatsoever, like the I don't know any any programming book, uh, 
it doesn't start with the index of everything and then you jump into the relevant section. <laughs> it's not how, how it works. You at the very least have to explain what everything is. The yeah. There there's a lot of nostalgia in that. I, I've I've heard people and people told me about GI Doc Gen. Oh I kind of like the the way GDK Doc is is structured. And my first reaction is, did you? You liked it. You really did. Or is it habit? Or is it like nostalgia when you're not placed in front of the same thing? Because most of the time, it's exactly that. It's habit. It's not really liking it. It's that you're used to it. doesn't mean that it's good. So, yeah. Let's start with a very simple, like, introduction. So it's going to be, for instance, in this case, this. And we're gonna define it this way. So one of the problems of restructured text is that the text inside the um, uh, inside the title, or at the very least the the annotation for this is a section title, has to be as long as the content as the title string. So we cannot do something like this. Though we can do something like this. Which means that if we print out the title, we also have to count the length of the title and generate the sections accordingly. Um, the short description is kind of useless. Unless... Mm, because then we have like description here and then we have the long description like we do on a man page so you have the title of the man page and the short description here then you get the synopsis then you get the description oh yeah th this is how yeah, this is how GTK Doc works as a man page. You get the title, short description, the synopsis of everything, then the description, then you have the breakdown of every single method, signal, property, and stuff. So it's a man page. And man pages should not be a model for anything in 2022, honestly. Um... We could have short description here, then description, long description. Then we have a section on methods. For instance, we can drop this. Uh, then how to define a method. Mm. So, we could use the method name then we open here then we have um, direction type name And we want to probably uh, ba, ba, ba. Uh, use a code block for that. Hmm. 
Yeah. We need a code block for that. Oh, come on. And then we have a method description. But the method also has a short description, right? No. Properties as have a short description. Or not. It's so Oh yes, let's let's add random stuff and not have any way of defining how things are supposed to look like. Uh, the mood. Yeah, the first line. So, the short description goes first, and then long description. Okay, okay. Assuming it doesn't repeat itself, then we can use it. So, we do method short block and then method this uh, long description uh, then we go proper um, properties and our code block um, so it's going to be um, type name and then it's going to be property short description and then we will have signals And it's going to be signal name. Just like me um, methods. Okay. So maybe we should do the same for the description as well. That would work, I think. So you get the short description as a, a quick paragraph, a long description, the list of methods. Like, uh, for instance, this one should probably be method name with a link. So for every method, it's going to be look like this. Hi, Unibird. And this is going to be property. Something like this so that we can add a link to it. And this one is going to be signal name. Okay. Yeah, that should probably do it. This is how you probably how you, I would probably structure. This. So this one is going to be um interface name. Yeah, so we kind of abstracted it away. This kind of a templated it away. Um, yeah, direction is going to be in or out, so, and out could probably be omitted because it's the default direction, sorry, in as the default direction. Um, so 
so yeah this got to be art type art name and art direction this going to be prop type prop name And this one is going to be direction, art type, and art name. Right. For those who just joined, um, I'm writing today a code generator for GDBus Code Gen to output restructured text instead of docbook XML. Um, so that we can integrate the output of GDBus code gen into other documentation generators like GI doc gen and Sphinx and whatever else. Um, basically anything that does not support docbook. And I did a rough template of what the output will look like. So we can start from that, that and implement it inside the documentation generator. Um, so I'm not going to you follow the same coding style of the docbook generator because it's very non-idiomatic Python. Let's let's do this in slightly more with a slightly more idiomatic Python. Uh, after all, we don't have to support Python 2, we only support Python 3, and we only and we support Python 3, a um, recent Python 3. Um, so I think we are up to 3.6 minute baseline for glib. Mostly because we depend on a bunch of stuff that depends on Python 3.6, like... Um, Mason. And the other thing is, even if you use GBus code gen on an older system, you'll probably not use a newer version of Glib on a system that does not have Python 3.6. And if you do, patches welcome, I guess. Okay, so right. So we don't want to deal with this anymore. Uh, yeah, I already changed the line here. Instead of using um, the doc book generator, uses uh, where is it? It's terrible. Yeah, it uses format modifiers like we are savages or something uh, it's also not really nice python at all so basically you open you store the file descriptor the file object on uh, on your object you hang it there um, and you rewrite it every time you iterate over the interfaces and you assume that once you overwrite it, Python will close the file descriptor for you, which is a fair assumption, but not a great assumption to make in the first place. And then you also assume that once you went through the last iteration and you leave the file object open, you will also be at the end of the build. So you exit and the file descriptor will be closed by the kernel. But you can notice where that, when that was written, 
and how it works these days, which by using a with context manager, which will close as soon as it goes outside out of the block. So instead of doing this, because we're again not savages. So and we use a format string again, not savages. Um, okay, so. One way to do this would be to almost literally load up this entire thing inside a string and then replace things using a format string. Why, why can't we do it? For two reasons. The first one is there are a bunch of context dependent modifiers like as i was saying the modifier to say this is a section title this is the main section title um, this line has to be as long as the line here and since this line is parameterized then we have to compute the length everywhere then we have another one this one is uh, static so we don't have to compute the line anywhere but this one is another parameterized line and so on and so forth right so we cannot just and also we have this little bit of code that will be a loop over every single arg uh, argument of the method and every single argument of a signal so we'll have to break it down into components. The first one is the header. So uh, we're going to do self Also, we don't pass the out file anywhere. We generate strings directly. But in order to make it slightly faster, uh, this, um, We start off with um, this. So, first of all, we compute the length of the name of the interface. And then we do Uh, uh, uh. Oh, hi Dimche, uh, thank you for the follow. Uh, this would be a lot easier in Perl <laughs> because I could write like print something times something else. Um, instead, we'll have to do something like this. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, list, it's not list comprehension. We can print a bunch of a bunch of characters in to do padding because I I know I've done this in GI Doc Gen. Um, uh, 
Okay, it's gonna be inside projects. <laughs> Generate. At least I think I did that. Uh, I don't remember if I did that. Hi, Jeff, and good afternoon to you. Uh, so it's basically a range. So whether it's going to be um, something like this or uh, mm, And then then it's gonna be again um, mm -hmm. Pretty sure there's a more Pythonic way to do this. I don't want to open Stack Overflow. <laughs> uh, this one should be like this. And same. Um, yeah. Yeah, if, if there are Python developers <laughs> that wish to school me on how to do stuff in Python, how to do text processing in Python, then feel free. I guess I'm not um, opposed to backseat programming. Um, right, one thing that um, restructure text can do is also have a bunch of additional metadata. I'm not entirely sure we want to add it there. But yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we should probably go until we hit here. So we also want to have the description. It's going to be this. And it's going to be now. We should probably change here as well. We use a consistent style for our strings. Uh, we could also use a end instead of having to add a bunch of stuff there. Um, yeah. 
I, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. So at this point, we have to add the short description, a new line, and the long description. So let's go inside the doc book. And we get doc string here. Then we have the since and deprecated. <laughs> yeah, because we have here and then we want to have like since since The fact that the deprecation doesn't have a deprecated since is kind of annoying. Typical case of something that happened that never was never foreseen. It would be a lot nicer to have the deprecation deprecated since. So A, you can add it to the uh, generated C code, but all, and it would be picked up by the introspection API, the introspection parser. So if you generate C API from the debus, public C API from the debus uh, interface XML, then you get something that is very close to what a C programmer would have to do. Instead, just having a deprecation warning, the deprecation message there doesn't tell you much. Um, so the doc string doesn't have a short one. Let me see, expand par. What does expand par as the? Yeah. Uh, And self expand. Mm -hmm. Expand member the keys. Oh my god, what the hell is this? Generate the expand dictionaries. Right, you see, you see what it does, basically. It generates the expansion dictionaries there. Uh, why? <sighs> so if I was using this to generate... Uh, like GI doc gen mark, markdown. I would use this to basically say, this is your interface. This is the link, the cross-referencing link that we can deal with. Uh, yeah. This is very GTK doc-like. And I don't like GTK doc-like. I'm trying to get rid of that. Do I want to keep it? Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, the sorting is, has to be stable. And yeah, it expands everything. Right. Right, for instance, this one wouldn't match that. Uh, both this and this would be transformed into um, 
code, uh, preformatted code blocks, uh, not code blocks, code fragments. So basically we had to essentially copy all of this, except that this links would not be actual link, uh, docbook links, but it would be internal references in restructured text. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to take all of this and copy it and then modify it inside the restructure text generator. Um, yeah. No. Okay. We want this to happen. And we want this to happen. Very pearlish. And this we want to replace it with this two. Oh. So which is kind of the reason why we don't actually want to have annotations like this at all. But since it's kind of common, I mean, this notation is also supported by JDocGen and will be transformed into simple um, code fragments. Same for this notation. This notation, though, we we and I say we as in people using um, um, people defining the code the, the documentation writing style, which is again me. Um, oh, according pep two five seven doctrine must must end with a period. Uh. It's well. It looks so bad, though. Anyway. Um, yeah, we were saying, um, yeah, the documentation style guidelines say that you should not be using the actual name of the constant for like true and false, but you should be using true and false. And you probably using null there is no point in using null most of the time because you have to mark an argument as nullable um but if you have to pass the null constant then use documentation blocks uh, the code blocks instead of annotating it with this uh then Uh, we don't have paragraphs, but we still need to expand stuff. We'll, we'll call it after that. Okay. Uh, 
And we need to also do something like this. Be a little bit more nice. Um, this is the key. We're going to use something like this. And the value instead, it's going to be different because we have an XML kind of thing. Um, so we'll have to switch it to something else. Uh, this is going to be probably something like um, something like breath. Something like this. And then we'll have to figure out our reference to that. Um, we also need uh, uh, to call the function dots to iPhones in a different way. Mm -hmm. Gonna look something like this. Uh, Basically something something like that. Need to look at the proper ref syntax once again. Um next ref um syntax. Turn my link. Yeah, because then we'll have to do something like this, which is dot dot example. Because internal links look uh, like external links look like this. And then they work like this. Hmm. Basically a little bit like this. It's kind of very annoying. Sphinx has other as another syntax for that. Um, like like this. This is the T 
text and this is the cross link into whatever. Like you define this, the name of the anchor here. And then you define the reference there. But it's a Sphinx addition. It's not entirely restructured text as output by uh, docutils. So I'm not extremely confident in using it. But yeah. But in theory we can we can do something like that. So we can literally do something like let's see, the pragma here. It's gonna be um interface name. And then every time you see, like, this, it gets turned into something like this. Then you have external link uh, extensions in Sphinx as well. So you got the XREF, like, um, I'm gonna say Pragma, but it's not Pragma, it's a macro or something. It's what we usually do with the colon dot colon instead of using ref but again those are actually um, sphinx extensions sphinx pragmas they're not generic restructured text ones. Hmm. We can probably keep it, but... Uh, like, here we would have to add something like this. It's a bit like what we did, what we do here. Yeah. This is the name of the anchor, so basically it goes up again and gets used for the actual man page thing. And we can use it to go to the top. So instead of hyphenating, we could even use the interface name directly.
like this. Since we are not generating a, um, since docbook, well, sorry, uh, restructure text parser will generate the link for us and validate it and um, sanitize it. Let, let's keep it this way and we'll see what happens when we start expanding this stuff. Yeah, this sucks. So every time we, you find something like this, you generate a link. It's not great. But yeah, essentially it would become something like this. Yeah, and basically every time you find this, it will be associated to a name. And also remove this crap. And add it here. Uh, this is a signal notation. Again, we're going to remove it and we will use... Uh, same thing. Uh, you cannot have a signal and a method with the same name, I think. And same with properties. So we, we should already be safe-ish there. Otherwise we'll have to figure out a way to prefix stuff. I mean, we can prefix with something. After all, we're gonna... Um, Create our own link anchors in inside the text. Uh, and yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, we're gonna generate the expansion dictionaries here. And then this one, we're going to call expand on the documentation. Um, yeah, for instance, we're going to do something like this. and add an anchor for that. New line, and then we're gonna do... Um, they call the long description and short description. So, hmm, doc string brief. Uh, 
Where are you? So this one is going to be... Um, then it's going to be... They're uh, going to need to expand the doc book, the actual documentation string. So it's going to be um, doc string, uh, expand doc string and true. Mm-hmm. Okay. So same. Since it's, this is Jilib and doesn't have a a manifest or anything, we have to do this manually. Uh -huh. We also have to... Yeah. It's fine. Oh, we probably need to add something to the Mesen build. Okay, so uh, Mesen build. Yep, I need to add a file here. And RST. Okay. Yeah, I know I could use a build setup and stuff. I, yeah, again, habit. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I'm literally using, um, oh, what the hell is this? Uh, this is my GH build being screwed. Okay. It doesn't matter. Should be fine. I moved my JH build installation from whatever into uh, from my old machine. Is it good to start from a toolbox a JH build shell? Uh, well, that's what I do. I have a toolbox that is running on uh, Fedora, whatever, and then I build a JH build so that it's isolated from the rest because uh, I'm old. <laughs> because I'm old and I'm stuck in my ways. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, in reality, uh, this is uh, dumb as hell in many, many ways. Uh, for instance, I wouldn't, I w should stop doing this. I should use Toolbox and I should use the Mason DevEnv to run my own stuff. But I'm stuck in my old ways. I, I need to force myself not to do this, which means that I will end up doing it most of the time. In theory, it's perfectly fine. You don't need to do anything special. You can you, you can have a toolbox that is, is a system installation, and uh, I then use JHBuild to build a bunch of dependencies that are not up to date in the Fedora, because it will set up a bunch of stuff by itself. Oh, there you go. At least you don't start doing a builder from a. You'd be surprised. I've done it multiple times, and then I catch myself, and I realize, 
I'm already using a text editor. Why should I start a new text editor? It's... Yeah, it's old habits die really, really hard. Um, oh yeah, it's not I face, it's I. Yeah, I usually end up doing very, something very, very stupid. Something very, very stupid. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. I have to test the output and see what happens. Because right now I'm not testing anything. But I also don't want to install anything. So I'm a, what I'm going to do, it's going to be doing this. Gdebug subject manager example. No. It's not even here. Yeah, we we're you was you were saying I literally went vim inside a toolbox inside a gnome builder instance because I'm dumb. Okay, so it's not gonna be here, but it's gonna be in GIO. Uh-huh. Where did I put that? Ah, oh, it's inside tests. JO tests. And here. Right. So, we need to add a new target here. And it's gonna be GDBus. Example object manager uh, generated uh, RST gen will be a custom target object manager RST gen. Then we're gonna rename that. Well, not right now, but before we add it, we're gonna rename it. So it's gonna be input. It's pd bus sample object manager xml. The output it's going to be uh, object manager gen org. Sorry, not gen rst gen org gdk pd bus sample. Object manager animal RST and object manager RST in example object manager app. and then it's gonna have a command of Python PD bus. Okay. The one that we just installed, the uh, just uh, created. Oh yeah, no, you should totally stream and show how people use uh, how people are supposed to use GNOME Builder, uh, so I can finally do the same. I have no idea how to use uh, Builder in a way that is 
idiomatic and sanctioned by the people that work on Builder. Uh, in specifics. Um, we don't care about C output directory. It's gonna be generate um, RST. Just do whatever works for you. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, usually I I I encourage people to actually do that to to um, do whatever is more comfortable uh, because at the end of the day, it's gonna be you that is gonna sit in front of this stuff for most of the day. Uh, and most of the week. Um, having said that, I, I do usually appreciate if the people that are working on the project um, at the very least demonstrate how... what is the most idiomatic way to use it. Then, at that point, you have... Um, that point, if you decide to ignore that and do whatever it is more comfortable for you, then you're doing that with a full knowledge and doing it properly. But um, otherwise, no, it's, I mean, yeah, you can do it, but do it with uh, a, the full knowledge of what you're doing. Uh, then it's going to be... Where are you? Output directory. here and it's going to be input and technically technically this target gets used by the documentation generation so we'll have to add it as a dependency there even though we are not going to use it inside the documentation itself but this one should be enough yeah so then we have to go inside the docs references GIO Mason oh no we need to go inside the here probably yeah dependencies here um oh wait no it's not here uh, it's gonna be in Let's see. Yeah. Uh, which one is it? So it's going to be... It's not going to be this one. So the test defines the XML and the generated here. And the dependency, ah, there it is. Gen zero. Yep, so that when we depend on this, we generate everything in one go. So we need to go here and we need to do 
Uh, Mason, don't figure the dictate up. Sure. And then we'll take forever. Uh, where is, what is it? Oof. Oof. Where are you? Ugh. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I'll... Removing the bot, I don't have I don't have many viewers, so I could just drop the bot. But I'm always worried because Twitch is very twitchy about stuff what the hell off um Twitchy, the Twitch is very Twitchy in general. I use the name of competitor. Oh, uh, yeah. If it was a URL, no. If it was a URL, then might be might be problematic. If it wasn't a URL, then I don't know. <sighs> God damn it. This is Mesum being ass. Okay. No, uh, I have no idea then. I I honestly I disabled all the uh how's it called? all the the block list for like random words i only use the um the bit that detects like all caps messages what the hell Something broken? Okay, now it works. Fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try and disable most of the bot at this point um it's m useful because it keeps track of a bunch of things oh, okay yeah path Yeah, we'll try to also generate the documentation. It's gonna be awful. Yeah, the the bot. I'll I'll try to l lower as much as possible from the from the bot. Yeah, the the default setting that used to ex um, used to be like set 
the when you add the bot, it's like timeout for three hundred seconds, like timeout for five minutes. Are you freaking insane? And here we go. Generate the API reference, and you will see why I had to write GI Docgen because we're generating documentation takes forever. Oh. I should <laughs> I should go and make myself make myself a cup of tea, and then I, when I come back, it will probably be still churning. Yeah, literally running the build, including the documentation step for GTK on our CI pipeline took the same amount of time for the documentation and the library. So it was uh, seven minutes-ish for building uh, half a million lines of C code and uh, examples and demos and stuff like that and then seven minutes to build the API reference oh to build the code and introspection data and this introspection data scanner and generator is not fast it could be a lot faster but it's not fast the end result was an obscene amount of time So let's see if I can get the uh -huh. GDBus example object manager. No. Yes. So. Yep. There you go. Almost decent. There's a bunch of paragraphs. What the hell? Why is it going to in paragraphs? Is it adding paragraphs by itself? That would be weird. Yes, it is. <sighs> oh, David, David, David. Bloody hell. Okay, we'll have to fix that. Great. God damn it. Why are you doing power over there? What the fuck are you doing? Jesus Christ. Yeah, it should not be doing this. It should be adding paragraphs on the documentation generator, not random places. Because I bet, and this is going to be hilarious if it is. So, the documentation inside the C API... We'll have to undo the paragraph stuff. Because if it doesn't, 
then you cannot literally parse it with recent GTK doc. Because GTK, recent GTK doc does not use paragraphs. It does not use docbook. It uses markdown. Please tell me stripping the paragraph. Holy shit. No, it's not using it. Ugh. Like, leakage of the implementation in random places. So this one should not be doing this at all. this Ugh. fucking hell And then the code, the doc book stuff should add a paragraph there. Yeah. Yeah. It will look like ass anyway, but at the very least, it's not going to be that terrible. But, fuck me. This is what happens when you randomly add stuff and then you clean up and you forget assumption made in other parts of the of the implementation Hey, we're already parsing this, the comment, right? So we should probably add paragraphs there. We can do it ourselves. We can do it ourselves. Come on. No, why? Why are you doing that? After all, we are never going to change from doc book, right? Right? Right, guys? It's going to be the same. I'm never going to drop doc book. We're never going to remove GTK doc. We're going to release GTB 3.0 before we switch from GTK Doc. <laughs> oh, no, why? God damn it. Oh, let's see. Yeah, last DD bus um, example. No. Yeah, it's cool. Ah, 
Alright, so... no, it's fine. This is useless. Yeah, it's so well done. GTK Doc is so well done. Object Manager example. Mm -hmm. uh, still adds a paragraph there. Why? There must be something that it also injects a paragraph. Mm -hmm. Still adds an example there, a paragraph there, or maybe it didn't. Uh, so if we do, yeah, test BD bus object manager example object manager RST, then we do again. There must be a para somewhere. Like, her. Must be somewhere still. It's not here. Must be some something lying around. Uh, it's not in the parse it though. It's not here. It's not here. Let's see. Okay, it's not in the. Yep. Oh, it's gone. Finally. Ah. <laughs> oh. And if we look at cat, yeah, right, and the reference is here as well, seems to be working, oh god, yeah, uh, there is a lot of white space there, I don't know if it's the parser, we should probably trim it. Because it's not great otherwise. Let's see. Gen. Mm -hmm. Seeing the cap. Yeah, the paragraph here is fine. 
there is an entire function that is devoted to literally enclosing every paragraph into the para elements but the parser will also do that for you why because fuck you that's why um but also all the white space should be should be stripped because it's pointless it's there just for the xml it's not in yeah it's not you should not be there i mean we can leave it for the doc book generator because doc book generator just ignores the white space in rst even in rst technically you can ignore most of the white space but in this case for instance it will not ignore it it will assume that you're trying to indent this stuff so we should probably trim it um yeah Now remember if it's trim or is it strip? And when we expand, we should for every line. We should explode it. Explode the string, trim every line, and then we should reassemble it. So it's going to be for L in S, for the line in S. Line equals line S. We do line by line replacing replacement. Come on. And then do this this yes. and line. And then we return. Um, join. Uh, if line Yeah. But we also need to trim um it should be fine. Basically remove the um, white space at the beginning, at the end of the line. That should be fine. Uh. 
I should literally change, make a change, a separate change for this. Like, remove the crap from the dot book generator so that it's at the very least a stable baseline. So we can add multiple code, gen uh, multiple documentation generator. For instance, one of the things that I might end up doing, even though I'm writing a uh, restructured text one, I could add a markdown generator as well, or any other format. Like in, uh, instead of using a markdown, I could use markd, um, which is a uh, a way to do HTML client-side rendering of Markdown. Uh, basically, you start by injecting a, injecting a bunch of JavaScript inside a Markdown page. Is how I do the graphene. Um, oh, sorry, the mu test API reference. This is all Markdown but it has a, a JavaScript um, uh, a JavaScript clause at the beginning. Here. So you get the... It's a markdown file, like plain, but it has at the beginning a link to a style sheet and at the bottom has a style class here and a script clause to include markdeep, markdeep.js. In this case, the minified version, but it's still the same. And what it does is as soon as the web browser sees it, uh, it will load up everything and it will turn this into an actual HTML page with proper rendering and a bunch of other stuff. It's very convenient. So if you have like documentation or an API reference or a very simple website that only needs Markdown and it's all separate pages, then using Markdeep is very, it's very convenient. Let's see. Ah, uh, didn't, didn't strip anything. I need to remove it. Yeah. Oh god, I fucking hate you, Python. String object and no attribute trim. Do you mean? Did you mean strip? If you know it. Ah, why are you doing this? A uh, bit of a kill to distribute the rendering to every client. It's n not compared to so compared to the typical javascript based page it's probably not that uh not that big of a hit the other thing is if you're running with javascript disabled on your uh, web browser uh then you get a markdown page um plain text so it's really not that much of a hit What the hell are you doing? It's not that big of a hit. It's fast enough because it's plain text and it's not that big of a deal. Oh, Jesus.
uh, 45. Oh, it's not expand, it's and Come on. Yeah, if I could only generate that without gener having to generate the documentation, the, the API reference for everything, it would be a lot easier. Um, hi, Ming, uh, Ming Wan Yu. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, it would be. It would definitely be. Uh, I'm right now. I'm doing a bunch of experiments here and there. But at the end of the day, I will replace everything and will just add everything at the same in the same place. Uh, right now, I'm moving around stuff and I'm I'm in adding new lines here and there. So it's easier if I keep them separate. But um, at the end of the process, I will remove all the all the appends and all the um, plus equals, and we'll do a single declaration. As soon as I I figure out a more stable output, I'll I'll do that. Oh no! Don't worry. It's it, it's a perfectly legitimate question. Yeah, finally. Oh. Right. Oh, man. But yeah. Uh, what time is it? Oh, uh, two hours, 30 minutes. Should I continue? It's half past six. Mm. Honestly, I might stop here because I have to make some dinner <laughs> i'm i'm relatively starving <sighs> yeah i i basically i think i did i lunch? did i have lunch No, I, I skipped lunch. That's why I'm starving. <laughs> Fuck. Like, like a kid. Uh, but yeah. Mm, I think this one is a good place to... Remove all of this. And we'll do this. this and we do I was just about to mention the fact that block operations
Yeah. I was just about to mention the fact that block operations would be nicer, nice to have. Oh well. I mean, I'm absolutely sure that at some point we will have everything will look a lot better in in Grum Builder anyway. I mean, I was there at when Builder started and it was already pretty good. These days is incredible. Um, JG Build Shell with Toolbox. Yeah, um, I don't know if I can use JG Build Shell inside Toolbox inside a Builder flat pack. But I, I didn't want to. And yes, I know I can use Vim key bindings. Um, I, I explicitly don't want to use them here. Because at some point, I will stop using Vim. Yeah, I know, wishful thinking. But at some point, I will stop using Vim. And if I add Vim bindings inside Builder, the end result is that I will be tempted. I will always be tempted to use Vim. Oh, this is Builder. I mean, I can use Vim bindings inside Builder, but I, I prefer not to. I have to wean myself off of Vim as much as I can. Also because the, uh, as you call the, um, the other reason I don't want to use Vim build, binding inside Builder is that um, at some point Builder will do something, will not do something with the Vim bindings that I'm used to and I will just be stumped. So I, I prefer to use native Builder bindings. Uh, Oh, immediately I something flashed and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I clicked. Uh, let me see. But yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it's fine now. We, we reached a, a good point to stop ourselves. And hopefully the output will be a little bit better. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think this is a nice spot to stop ourselves before we go 
way too deep into the woods. Basically, what's missing now is going through every um, every property, every signal, and every method of the interface, and generate the block for each of each one of them. Yeah. Oh, anyway, okay. Let's let's switch back. Oh. Right. So this was a nice a nice excursion into another type of documentation generator that we have to deal with. Um, not just API references for C or tutorials in written in plain text, but also our interfaces, our Dbus interfaces have to be documented. And ideally we want to not be forced to use docbook and the tool chain, the, the docbook XML tool chain. Um, which are which are not great to yeah to avoid making a finer point of it they're not great they are slow they are hard to uh, integrate with a bunch of stuff and it's a lot better if we switch to a simpler set of tools so after writing this i'll have to write uh to modify gi doc gem so the documentation that it can load is not just markdown but also restructured text files uh, which is fine, should not be a huge deal. Python has modules that deal with restructured text like natively. Um, the docutils like modules can be installed pretty easily. And GTK already depends on them because it turns the restructured text um, documentation for the command line tools that GTK provides into man pages so adding a new dependency to gi doc gen is not going to be a problem because G, the gtk already depends on that um and remember uh gi doc gen is meant to be used for gtk if you use it for your own library that's fine i'm happy for you if it works fine for you but my main goal is to make GTK look good, not make um, everyone happy. I actually try very hard to make everyone unhappy in the same exact amount. But other than that, um, so that's step two in this brand plan. After that, I will probably be release uh, GI Doc Gen uh, for this year in time for GNOME 42 beta, which is in February. So that would be that will be available because I have accumulated a bunch of changes here and there. Um, let me see. Yeah, I've accumulated a bunch of changes in uh, in GI Doctrine that are come on.
Yeah, there are a bunch of changes there that should be released. I should not, I should not delay at another release. There are a couple of things that I want to land there. One is the SD restructure text support for extra content files. And the other one is another set of uh, small fixes for the links across referencing links um, because there are a couple of places where we should do better um, another thing that I want to land is separating the dependencies from the related namespaces for instance uh, Pango right now has the, a list of both dependencies and in the main page so if we go here and we go to pango there are dependencies here so geobject arfbuzz but they are also related uh, namespaces they are not dependent that they are not dependencies of pango they are reverse dependencies of pango so pango cairo pango fun config uh, free type 2 ot and xft these are not dependencies. These are reverse dependencies or related like namespaces. So I should add a new section here for related namespaces and dependencies should only be used to list uh, namespaces that are included inside the main namespace. The main difference is that Pango, the Pango namespace the documentation in Pango namespace can reference geobject and half buzz um, symbols using the uh, GI docgen link, but it cannot do the same for Pango Cairo and everything else because they cannot be resolved. The names inside the, these namespaces cannot be resolved at the Pango level. And if I do that, and if I mix dependencies with reverse dependencies or related crates or related namespaces then I confuse people they start thinking I can link to Pango Cairo API straight from the Pango API when in reality you can't because we cannot distinguish between a broken link and a valid link if we cannot resolve the name and name resolution is only available if your um, if your namespace includes the definitions from another namespace. So GDK can link to symbols exposed by GDK, but GDK cannot ex uh, expose symbol cannot link to symbols exposed to G from GDK. But the, the idea is that we should have a very separate uh, bit. And for instance, um, maybe the, the build and dependencies uh, section should be auto-collapsed, whereas the related uh, namespaces should be always open. But yeah, that, that is another thing that I'd like to fix before doing a release of GI Docgen. Uh, anyway, okay, it's almost three hours. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for joining me in this stream. Uh, if you're looking at this uh, stream as a VOD on YouTube, uh, thank you for sticking up, uh, sticking out um, with me for again nearly three hours. Um, I usually stream on Monday and Wednesday and Friday, plus random streams in during the weekend, maybe if I if I want to play some game. But during the week, I usually stream at uh, four uh, U, uh, four p.m. UTC for uh, documentation writing um, or writing code for GTK and GNOME. Uh, if you enjoy this, you should follow me on Twitch. 
or you should follow me on YouTube. And uh, so you get notification whenever I start streaming or new videos drop. For today, I think we can close here. And thank you again for, for being here and chatting with me <laughs> as well. Sorry about the bot. And I hope that the, the bot situation will be, will be solved um, at some point. Oh, thank you, Ari, for following me. Um, and I shall see you on Friday. Have a great rest of the day, and thank you again. Bye!